that's dealing with the current um, investigation of um, Harvey Weinstein, the, the movie producer, um, that all of these allegations of rape and, um, you know, the casting couch, which none of that is new. Right. It, it's, we, we've heard about it for the most part. Um, but what the reason why I want to talk about it today is because, number one, it's showing signs of consciousness rising. Right. Um, the it's fact that true. this this is even taking place. Yeah. Uh, and then number two, I want to really give the, the public um, a context and historical mm -hmm. context for misogyny. Uh, why it has persisted and how it mm. um, continues, and honestly, what we can do about it. Because yeah. at the end of the day, I literally wrote my dissertation on the fear of female sexuality over 20 years ago, and I was at this liberal university, very liberal private university, um, and I could not get a single one of the liberal faculty Are you serious? to touch the topic, including the lesbian women really? that were, I thought they would love it. Yeah. I could not get anybody to touch the topic. Really? And um, one of the most liberal um, uh, faculty members, when I when I said to him, well, you know, you're the main one I was really counting on. And he said, oh, mm -mm. my wife, she, that there's no way what? she would allow me to be on a committee, number one, with that topic, and number two, with an attractive woman. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so so we've come full circle, it's been over 20 yeah. years. Yeah. I wrote this, and um, I, I really want to cover today um, the history of it, because most people have no clue why this um, continues to persist, and um, there's always a an event on the horizon, mm. there's a causal event. And um, in the class, you and I have yeah. talked about it, um, but I, I think most people have not really connected the dot uh, historically with the actual genocide that oh, has taken yeah. place against women. Uh, most people are aware of the witch hunts. Right. And it went on for hundreds of years, and that was literally a resurgence of the original genocide. And for those of wow. you who want to get a little more information about it, um, if you go to my blog at drparthenia.com and you look at the Wonder Woman article, I go into a lot of detail about the historical context of uh, the that whole story, you know, it, that that is perceived as myth uh, with the Wonder Woman. Uh, but there is an actual island of Lesbos yeah. off of Greece and, and all of that. Uh, that story of the Amazons and, mm. and these women warriors that were preparing for war against the men who had tried to annihilate them is actually based in historical fact. Mm. And um, another book that I want to refer people to is Anton Parks, The Secret of the Dark oh, Stars. Yes, that I is mean, a must. that will <laughs> blow your mind. Um, but all of this actually only confirmed what I had written over 20 years ago yeah. in my research, the conclusion that I had come to, because I had I'd worked with Rian Eisler on my dissertation, and she's this incredible, um, I would call her, well, she was, she was named one of the uh, greatest minds of the 20th wow. century. And she wrote this book called The Chalice and the Blade, which was about the destruction of the goddess civilizations mm -hmm. on Earth. And, and it was based on, you know, the written historical record mm -hmm. Um, that could actually be validated through uh, artifacts and, and historical really? stuff. But, there, but there's so much that's been destroyed, and her book was really, really incredible. And, and, and I would talk to her about what was this all right. about? Yeah. I mean, it, it was lit if you look at the history of it, there's been this annihilation of goddess civilizations, and they literally were wiped out and patriarchy took over. Yeah. And so, and then there's also this um, shh, don't talk about um, misogyny, right. don't talk about the um, inequities between men and women because this is the, the millennium, okay? Right. Yeah. It is now 2,000 people yeah. and women have equal rights, okay? Right. But right. let's like 
keep it real. Yeah, as okay. if racism doesn't exist exactly. anymore. <laughs> no, no, racism doesn't yeah. exist. Sexism doesn't exist. Nationalism doesn't exist. Right. And certainly classism right. doesn't exist. Oh, no. And you remember that. Was <laughs> Not in America. <laughs> Not in America. <laughs> the land of the free and the home of the brave. Yeah. You know, those things don't exist in America. Or imperialism. <laughs> not, okay, let's not forget that. <laughs> certainly not imperialism because colonialism disappeared. Yeah, right. it, it was replaced by imperialism. But, you know, you can't talk about yeah. that. Yeah. And so with me teaching this for over 20 years to college students about identifying the divide and conquer tactics, what I always said, which was validated by Anton Parks, um, The Secret of the Dark Stars, when I looked at all of the, the four major isms, I always said, guys, look, it started with sexism. Yeah. Because sexism divides the entire planet in half. Right. It pits men against women and women against men. And, you know, and then when you have like this whole concept of uh, men are from Mars and women are from Venus, then if you're from totally different planets, yeah. then how are you ever going to? come up with a middle you know yeah. meeting ground so let's just keep it real um sexism is alive and well yeah. misogyny is alive and well and the fact that the the case against bill cosby took decades yeah. to to build okay <laughs> and i knew him personally yeah. on the set okay for four months yeah. and i oh. tried to tell everybody that america's favorite dad was not who people thought he was True. and nobody would listen to me everybody was like how could you say that about right. america's you know dad and i and i tried to get people to understand that it's smoke glass and mirrors yeah um, there's pr people it, who cover things up hello <laughs> right and that's your major yeah i mean you're a journalism major yeah like so, we could spin anything to make it sound like oh you know it wasn't that bad or mm -hmm. it never you could pay people off to make it seem like nothing happened and that is exactly what has been happening when you look at the cosby case when you look at the weinstein case um, you have this systemic system of yeah. sexism and misogyny. And, and, you know, some people will say, well, what is she talking about? What is misogyny anyway? Um, it, you know, and, and there's simple definitions of it. But what I want to um, expand upon, misogyny would include anything that sees any concept or belief or idea or action that puts women down and perceives them as less than or anything or feminine inferior. yeah anything feminine that's even true children, it like can be children and animals yeah um and and it's you know loosely defined as hatred of women but if you say hatred then the average guy is going to say i don't hate women right you know i love women i'm a womanizer yeah okay? of course and womanizing <laughs> is a form of contempt for women yeah it, it's, <laughs> it's a form of distrust and hatred for women so you know you kind of have to stay away from um, words like hate yeah. because the the denial of the average person would say oh no 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 not me yeah. I'm not a misogynist but it's looking at all of these viewpoints and concepts and actions that here in America if you look at the the book the research sex and power written by um, this professor from USC uh, who's in law um, women in America only hold 3% of the positions of real power in America. And to this day, we still don't have an, a, a, yeah. a female president. Yeah. Um, so that, that speaks volumes. And one that probably could have been an honorary male. Well, we yes, really and, think about and, that. And so we do have to talk about yeah. that. So, so when we look at, okay, how did this happen and why does it persist? So I have to say, okay, there, it could not, um, I know how it happened, but it could not persist without the complicity of other women yeah. uh, buying into this um, women can't be trusted, um, yeah. you know, this whole fear of other women and this competitiveness with other women. And that's one of the things that I always um, covered in class is that women have to look at how they treat other women. Right. And, it, and it goes from mother-in-law to daughter-in-law, yeah. to from mother to daughter, this jealousy, yeah. this competitiveness, <laughs> this always comparing yourself to other women. And that woman, you know, is smarter, is prettier, and so she's a threat. And and not looking at where is this coming from? Right. You know, why would I need to participate in a system that already 
puts women down. Mm. Well, it's it's the psychology of sexism. Right. Um, and, 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 and you look at the, the psychology of colonialism, um, it's very, very simple. Mm. You know, in, in order to subjugate and dominate, um, you have to use divide and conquer tactics. And so this whole yeah. concept of the woman is the weaker sex. And so when you have the, this whole idea of might makes right and power over, um, then if the woman is deemed the weaker sex, then that gives the right to whoever is the stronger sex to dominate and control her. And so with the advent of patriarchy, what you had is women being turned into children, the right. property of yeah. the husband, and um, becoming um, livestock. Yeah, and literally less than yeah, less than dogs. Pretty yeah. much, they probably treat their dogs better than they do their well. Their and, wives and certainly sometimes. the livestock, you know, throughout yeah. history, the the cattle, the yeah. horses and cattle, they were treated. Better. Yeah. Because and, at least they'll make you some money, you yeah, know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And the role of the, the female was to bear a male child. Right. And so if you look at the whole history of this, just the written history of it, um, if you look at Greece and Rome, um, female children, infanticide of female children mm. um, in uh, Rome and Greece, which were considered the epitome of civilization, um, the, the girl child could be left on the side of the road and if she survived then, and someone chose to pick her up, then she became a slave of whatever, whatever family chose to pick her up. Wow. So it was death or slavery. Um, or, and then, of course, there was prostitution. Right. So you could yeah. those or, or you could be married and become a baby bearer, but you better bear a son yeah. or a, a group of sons. Um, so there's the written history. I don't have to, that can all be verified yeah. uh, historically. And so when you have this kind of mindset about women, um, you and, and the history to prove it, um, yeah, you can say, like Virginia Slims, we come a long way, baby. <laughs> but have we really? You yeah. know, we've had the sexual revolution, and yet the sexual revolution, and I can let you, yeah. like, did that really liberate women? No, I don't think so at all. I think now, if anything, we're more so slave to this idea of having to be this sex pot. There you go. Okay, another form of slavery. Yeah. Okay, another form of degradation. Another form of um, exploitation. Yeah. And know? we do it, to, and then... And women do it to yeah, themselves. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So then you make yourself your yeah. own slave. Yeah, and so, and I'm not by any stretch of the imagination blaming the victim. Right. Okay, all I'm saying is, okay, patriarchy exists, misogyny exists, um, and in order for us to deal with this, um, we have to look at the psychology behind it and, and also how it continues to persist. And it absolutely cannot persist without these kinds of conversations, without women coming forward, without women banding together and saying, okay, we support this woman who uh, filed this case because right. that's why most women don't speak up. Yeah, um, because and you, then you're all get these women started again. coming into coming forward even terry cruz came yeah. forward and started saying like yeah somebody grabbed my junk okay. or my butt and then now everyone is is back because they know this is wrong right and so that's a sign of the times so that's yeah. hope it's, it's showing me hope and so that's why i think this conversation is so important today so we're going to talk about how and why women continue to give their power away and what we can do about it so uh, vanessa i'm going to let you lead this discussion well, I feel that the reason why women get give their power away is because we've denied our own femininity. We've seen it as something that is weak, mm -hmm. and we've been extremely, or we've been brainwashed to believe that, you know, we need to become more like men more masculine, in yes. order to... Honorary men. Yes. <laughs> yeah, in order to be accepted in the power structure. Yeah, and to get by because we'll get either subjugated or, or sexually harassed yeah or you're a threat 
Yes, yeah. you become a threat. And and so it's it's all of that. And, and when you look at the, the truth in that, what I see, and I always talked about it um, in class, is the, whim, the young girls in your generation yeah. just got to the point where they started becoming really sloppy yeah. and not taking care of themselves. Yeah. I mean, putting on all of this extra weight, and we know that weight is a form of protection. Right. And when I looked at... Um, um, it, it, it was so clear to me the amount of sexual abuse that was going on with the right. students because literally 98% yeah. of the students that came to me had all been sexually molested, wow. whether they were male or female. And yeah. um, weight is just an indicator that I'm afraid I've got to put on this extra weight, but not, of course, every uh, person yeah. who's been molested will put on the weight, but it's a clear indicator. Yeah, um, like for me. Or you're eating for comfort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. Uh, I mean, for me, I, while I didn't put on weight, I did did become tumbled. I, I did and it was there was a point in like 2010 I was like oh my god I'm a girl I'm like why am I dressing like a boy I literally had to co I, I was like this feels so awkward to even be feminine yes, yes. I was dressing exactly like my friends and yes. I thought that that somehow I was gonna and, get a and man. your friends were guys okay and I was gonna get a man looking like them well, see, okay, yeah. and then that's called cognitive dissonance. Yes. Okay, where you're holding two opposing belief systems that, you know, they can never come together. Yeah. So it's like, I want to get a man, but I, the way I'm going to get him, I'm going to dress like a man. Right. Okay, and, and I'm going to act like a man, yeah. and I'm going to get a real man. And I have to give my everything away exactly yes exactly you you must be subservient yeah. uh, and so that's what you were doing with your friends so. driving them around to you yeah know, you're the the go-to and in order to be a part a part of the guy game i, I was the down girl the down much, girl yeah for, for anything, whatever down what, whatever for whatever pretty yes. much yeah yeah and go along to get along yeah okay and yours had a lot to do with the need for approval and acceptance and yeah. so a lot of uh a lot of people have that issue, but you know, at the same time, the lack of femininity, um, yeah. it's also that tomboyishness is a way to protect yourself. Right, that's true. You know, because on the one hand, you're like, yeah, I do want to get a boyfriend and I do want to get a man, yeah. but at the same time, I'm scared of the exploitation. Yeah, and um, there was a lot of weird, touchy feely people oh, that of just kind of. Absolutely. Like, I really did. Especially older men. Yeah, they're always the ones. It's like, can you guys leave me alone? <laughs> Well, and, and because until you started, like, dressing like uh, a female, yeah, yeah. you looked 12 years old. I did. And so yeah. all of the it's old true. men that were pedophiles, yeah. you know, in real in their mind, really? uh, you were the perfect hit. Yeah, I was legal, you know, <laughs> I looked like a kid, I mean. And you didn't yeah. weigh but 90 pounds. Okay. Soaking wet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You fit the profile. Yeah, I did. Like, perfect. <laughs> yeah. And and so we we are dealing with that. Yeah, it's okay? true. It, it's real. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I I have like male friends that are in their eighties, and I sit and look at them, and when they get in their little groups, and and these guys, they just all hang out, and the misogyny within that group, and these are all educated men, right. retired professionals, and the way they talk about women, women are nothing but objects it's to true. them. And if you say anything about it, oh, how could you say that to me? <laughs> you know, we love women. Of okay? course. And, and, when and, they're bent over. Yeah, they, there you go. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> when they got yeah. their top so, up. Yeah, so we, when we can grab them. Yeah. You know? And, and when, when I, every time I, I would talk to them about it, it would be, oh, come on, you know, um, that's just our generation uh, women don't mind. I mean, what is the problem? It's like, well, you um, never really asked, right? Because she had to keep her mouth shut, huh? Like, and 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 when when I got into the discussion of the Weinstein case, all oh, these women knew there was a ca casting couch. I said, no, wait a minute. You so you're telling me all these wide-eyed 15, 16 year olds coming from Timbuktu, Kansas, right. they knew about the casting couch? I right. don't think so. And why do they have to exploit themselves in order to get into to be Hollywood? in the business? Exactly. You know. And there is, there's so much cognitive dissonance yeah. um, with um, men who are misogynist but consider themselves progressive um, and that they're not, that it's almost impossible to have that conversation with them. Yeah. We're going to go a lot more, a little bit further back into the history of the genocide against women.
it, it <laughs> yes I mean it has been attempted over and over yeah. and so um, I, I'm, I'm referring you guys to Anton Park's uh, book The Secret of the Dark Stars um, because he's mirroring the research before I ever knew about him and the conclusions that I came to, uh, to with um, Rian Eisler about the fact that it was this fear of female sexuality that um, has caused the violence against women and the domination and subjugation and control of women. Um, and I had, I had narrowed it down to the fact that um, but there's more to it. But what I had narrowed it down to was the fact that, okay, men, when they see an attractive woman, uh, there is this uh, visceral response, right. uh, physical. There's mm -hmm. a physical response that they honestly feel that they cannot control uh, because right. it's an <laughs> involuntary response. And so if you go way back, okay, thousands of years, um, after the downfall of humanity, yeah. um, that would have been perceived as some kind of power of black magic right. that a woman had over a man. How is it that I cannot control my response? You know, when when a beautiful woman walks into the room, right. and then and then you see even today where when a beautiful woman walks into the room, all of the guys they'll kind of get together right. and one alpha male. <laughs> is going to dominate yeah. okay and and they and and they're you're gonna see the waters part i mean they, they're gonna all be jockeying <laughs> for position and only one is gonna come out on top and the rest of them are gonna go okay <laughs> you the man <laughs> and it's so like i noticed this in high school because i moved around a lot and i'd be the new girl on the block all the guys you know like even in seventh grade you know what when, when i moved like all the guys on on the playground they're like yeah yeah you know i'm the one and then and then the girls like came up to me like look you see him that's my man you see him over there don't mess with him and and my response was look i'm not interested in any, any of them why don't y'all keep them off of me yeah okay that'd be good yeah. um, and I have watched this really? since I was a kid. Now, have you ever noticed that? Yeah. You paid I've attention seen that. to it? Yeah. Okay, uh, Jose, have you ever, come on, can you, you're a dude. Started. <laughs> and Jose, Jose is young. Okay, so I'm not making this up, all right? <laughs> Uh, and I'm not hating on men. I'm just a social psychologist, right. and I observe these yeah, things, yeah. and they are real, all right? And so you still have that going on where there's this energy, you know, that lights up a room when uh, a, a sexually attractive woman walks in. And of course, you know, you'll hear men say, oh, well, it's just biological, you know, but there is this fear that this woman has some power over me. And then that fear of rejection. Am I going to get what I want? Am I going to get what I want? Okay, uh, you know, what kind of hustle, right. you know, do, do I have to, what, what's it going to take? Is my masculinity going to be, mm, you am know, I good enough? threatened okay, or am something? Am I big enough? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do I have enough money? Yeah. Um, okay, what's it going to take? And so yeah. this, this crazy competitive, you know, instinctual drive uh, kicks in. And then if the guy, the alpha, doesn't win, okay, and Jose, if he goes back to the group and he didn't get her, okay, are the guys going to, you know, treat him like the alpha? Yeah. They're going to put him down. Okay. Uh -oh. So there's a lot at stake there, yeah. okay, with the alpha, okay? <laughs> and, and that's still going on today where the woman is objectified and and it's not about oh i'm i'm after her because i'm looking for a mother for my children uh, because that is one of the instincts is that you know men are attracted to beautiful women mm -hmm. because that is considered biologically a sign that she's genetically viable right. that she will produce healthy um, you know, strong, good-looking kids. Yeah. Um, because good symmetry is just a sign of good genetics. Yeah, and there's an energy to good symmetry. There's exactly. There's a reason why. And there's a spiritual context yeah. to it. You know, absolutely. Yeah. So that's absolutely biologically yeah. correct, yeah. you know, that you would be attracted. But we're not talking about men competing. Jose, are, are we talking about men that are trying to get a wife, you know, and they're thinking about my future, <laughs> right. you know, heir or progeny? No, right. it's like... Who's going to be able to get her in bed first? Yeah, okay. It's the and how many notches can yeah. I get on my belt? And and it's a whole conquest thing. Yeah. Um, and then once he gets the girl, then it's like, 
Bye. I'm yeah. on to the next one. That's what we're dealing with. Okay, that's a form of misogyny that that men, you know, you'd be hard pressed to get them. I mean, uh, Jose, do you think that you get a man to admit that that's a form of misogyny, that kind of objectification of women? They would say, wouldn't they say it's normal? They're like, yeah. what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> and that what they and that how they would look at you? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He's, yeah. He's agreeing, but you know, um, yeah, there is some reticence uh, in agreeing to that because it is going on. So when we talk about the sexual energy and power of a woman, yeah. that is a threat, okay? Yeah. If you can't own it, contain it, you know, because even if the guy got the woman, um, he would still be scared of, oh, it's like that song, when you're in love with a beautiful woman, yeah. you know, everybody wants her. Everybody yeah. thinks she's the most beautiful woman alive, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and so and the song says, you look for lies, yeah. okay? So even if he gets the woman, it's like, what am I going to do to keep her? You right. know, all these yeah. other guys want her, okay? Yeah. And then he has to find some kind of way of controlling her, and it's ridiculous, okay? Right. It's just, it's all um, a fabricated um system yeah. that keeps men in competition um, and makes women a, uh, what do you call it, uh, a trophy, yeah. uh, a prize. You know, you, you got to go for the best prize, yeah. and then that's what makes you a real man, Yeah. okay, yeah. When, when you get the prize woman. So all of that, it, now, that's still existing. So when we go back to this whole sexual energy, uh, Anton Parks validates yeah. that the original war, okay, the original war against women, and I had also come to this conclusion, is the fact that women bear the children. Yeah. Okay, they, um, they were the vessel that was chosen by nature to carry and, and bring forth life. A man cannot do that. Yeah. Okay, so there was that you know, aspect of it is that we can't do this. Um, yeah. And then there was the aspect of the power that was um, the intuitive gifts yeah. and powers that women had and the sacredness and the power of the menstrual blood. Yeah. And, oh, let's not talk about that. Right. Okay. <laughs> because that got demonized like, right. really well in Very the Old true. Testament. Yeah. Um, but that was the prize, the power, yeah. you know, of the, the menstrual blood, which um, it had these powerful magical powers and even in hindu uh hinduism oh, menstrual yeah, blood see, is considered and you something... see them collecting it yeah, yeah and i when i went to bali you can't go to a a, a temple if you're on your period well yeah uh, well because and, they and, think the, the whole world is dirty if you go to a temple on your period well isn't that's the cognitive dissonance <laughs> yeah because on the one hand you have the historical context of you see these goddesses and they are collecting the menstrual blood wow. okay but at the same time oh you know let's condemn it right. because of the power that's yeah. inherent in it um so you have to demonize anything that's powerful yeah um so the genocide against women um came after and see people think that cloning and all of that just you right. know <laughs> came about yeah. you know today but we've had and and you uh, everybody can validate this we've had civilizations that were way more powerful Yes. And then as you look at Atlantis, yeah. okay, they were flying machines. All of right. this is being documented. Plato documented it. Wow. So there were way more advanced civilizations than us. And so cloning, and you can go back and look at Egyptology, yeah. and there was cloning. And even Gilgamesh talks and, about and cloning. And Gilgamesh talks yeah. about it. So... Um, let's just face it, you know, we were not the first people to be able to clone. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so once cloning came about, um, the men decided, oh, so we don't have to worry about the threat of the females, right. and so we can get rid of them, and that's when the genocide started. Yeah. And they nearly wiped out women. Yeah. And they ended up, just like the Amazon uh, the Amazon women, they, were, they ended up escaping the planet and ended up in a different place mm. um, just to protect them themselves from the complete annihilation and in the fear of all of that women had to develop ways just like the Amazons 
means like how are we going to protect ourselves you know and the the psychology and the psychological damage that was done to the psyche of women how do we survive because you know there were weapons that were being used against these women and their powers were taken away from yeah. them and then they went into survival mode and so what happened is women went way over on one side of protective mode and anti-violence and we don't want to have anything to do with this warring yeah. okay look at this planet it's all about war i mean yeah. we got a president right now yeah. who it's all about nuking okay you know? <laughs> it's all about nuclear weapons yeah. and we've learned nothing yeah it's like what have we learned from history and so there see what i'm saying is that it has to start with the unification of men and women yeah. it has to start with the healing of this um, divide between it, there's like a an ocean between yeah. men and women and we have to uh, be willing to look at that and be able to have open-hearted conversations yeah. about it and acknowledging acknowledging the truth about it and saying yeah this really um, is fundamentally wrong because um, men are half you know female, right. I mean, and women are half male, yeah. you can't get away from that. Yeah. And the whole universe is built on this negative and positive polarity, which is the negative and positive polarity of the masculine and the feminine. So you can create clones, but what we do know about cloning is that each successive clone degenerates, right. and and you're not um, you're still not being a creator, yeah. and so you're moving further and further away from the the way that the universe is designed to move, which is in an upward spiral. Right. And then when you move into let's get rid of women and subjugate and dominate them, and then let's move into how we can control everything and control life, which is really what it's all about. Then you have this natural decline which is what we're looking at now we're, yeah. we're looking at the decline of the American Empire right um, the British Empire yeah. up, up, upon whom the Sun would never set every <laughs> empire declines when there is this constant war between men and women yeah. you divide society down the middle right and then and then it's easy after that yeah. you know the classism the nationalism the um, the racism the racism yeah, those are all just extra tools yeah. you know to make sure that at the end of the day you're not looking at the real problem who is causing all of this and why, which is that very small 3%, which is really being controlled by 1%. Yeah. And it's all about um, getting people to be subservient, yeah. getting people to serve them um, and letting them do all the hard work and the creative work and giving them just enough, having yeah. the, this so-called educated middle class. Or what that, you call trinkets. Yeah, and, and the trinkets. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and having this so-called middle class that, you know, you can hope to be like us right. one day. And so the middle class says, oh, well, we don't, we're not going to worry about them lower class people right. because we want to be like the people that are really oppressing the whole world. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a really sick kind of um, system, but it has worked yeah. well yeah. for the people that devised it. And unless people um, are willing to um, consider what the Watergate uh, prosecutor said, the very worst possible motives of the people in power, then you will never have anything but what we have. Right. And at the end of the day, a lot of people, you know that old saying, ignorance is bliss? Is not. <laughs> but but they believe it yeah, is it's true. So, so it's like they're like those little three little monkeys. See no evil, right. speak no evil, hear no evil. You know, don't tell me the truth. Right. Okay, I don't want to hear it. Okay, yeah. and as long as we're not willing to hear the truth and have these kind of discussions, yeah, you know, then we will never really pull ourselves up. But I see signs of hope. Yes. You know, yes, the yes. fact that these two cases, and then I, I look at Flint, Michigan, right. where you've got literal city politicians that are being criminally prosecuted. Really? Oh, for the first time. Where was and, I? And, <laughs> well, for years, I've been saying, why are none of the politicians held accountable? Yeah. They can blow up countries, kill millions of right. people, and it's okay. Gas Nothing, their own people. <laughs> oh, and, and they can yeah. still build billions you're still big and and you the man yeah okay you're still big um but 
nothing ever happens to them. And yeah. so people sit up and complain, and I look for little things like that, and I go, because I was saying that, why are they not prosecuting these people yeah. that diverted the city water from Lake Michigan to some dirty, nasty river? And that was okay. <laughs> All right. But it's happening. Yeah. So that's happening. Um, this whole investigation and the support, yeah. you know, that the woman I is being given who brought these charges and the blackout yesterday on Twitter. You know, uh, th there was a support. Uh, this yeah. woman, because Twitter had shut down her account because she was calling for transparency and asking for more women to come forward, and her account got shut down by Twitter wow. unless she took some of those tweets off, and then people decided... Um, we're going to support her. So that's, I mean, look, I mean, there's small signs. Yeah. But, but I mean, seriously, it's better than no hope at all. Right, that's true. That's <laughs> Cause, true. Because, you know, as a, a, you know, as a his, histor historical buff and as an educator, that's all I can do is just hope that people will want to get yeah. educated. Hope that yeah. people will want to know the truth. But we know the truth that most people don't want to know the truth. It's true. And I'm hoping that just, even if I can make a difference in just a few lives out there. And it only takes a small number to change the world, really. And I do believe that. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm just um, so excited to have this discussion. Yes. And to show signs of hope, yes. you know, in America. <laughs> okay, there's hope. Uh, let's focus very quickly on what can be done. Um, and I think that education is the number one key. Yeah. Informing yourself. Don't just listen to me. Read right. and think critically and ask yourself, is it possible that this could be true? Right. You know, and, and trust your in intuitive gut instinct when you're reading things because if you're just going to stay with the status quo, right. his story um, yeah. <laughs> versus um, yeah. doing the, the research yourself um, with eyewitnesses, um, his, you know, journals, historical accounts um, that had nothing to do with the media or media control. That's where you're going to find the truth. And at the end of the day, it all boils down to uh, whether you want to know the truth because the yeah. old saying um, in the New Testament, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That is our way out of yeah. this, is the love for the truth and the willingness to accept the truth no matter how painful it is, yeah. no matter how ugly it is. If it's true, it's true, okay? Yeah. And and if you don't like it, then let's create a new reality. Yeah, and okay. when you know the truth, at least now you can actually do something about and it. And understand it. Yeah, it's being like a like someone who is blindsided by something that oh I didn't expect that to happen. It's like, but you you denied the truth. Exactly. You were told. Yeah, but at the same time, I also think that that is our path to empathy yeah. and to compassion because once you understand the fear right. and the jealousy. Uh, of the male mm -hmm. um, that led to the original genocide of the female, yeah, yeah. Um, then you can develop empathy and compassion yeah. and do what you can to set aside those fears. Mm. Um, you can only do what you can do. Yeah. And, and, it, and it has to do with the willingness to uh, the other person being willing to meet you halfway. Yeah. And so I think the impetus is on women. Women are really going to have to come together right. and stop buying into this co competition and the divide and conquer yeah. among each other and be supportive as women are coming together yeah. um, all over this Weinstein issue. And the truth is we have not lost our connection to source. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's always there. Yeah, we, we have our intuition. Yes. You know, we're <clears throat> still connected it to wasn't completely taken away. No, it wasn't. Yeah. And, and if anything, like, we're the ones who are bringing in new information. Yes. And it's, it's, it's going to have to be the women to change things because men are comfortable. Well, and why should they change a system that right. serves them? Exactly. You know, where, where women um, get to um, still earn less than men that's, for the same work. It's literally like <clears throat> asking a slave master to let go of his slaves where he gets exactly. no gain. Exactly. You know? Exactly. I mean, it, I've, I've been saying that for decades. So at, at the end of the day, uh, no one is going to voluntarily give up a system right. of, you know, that, that serves them. 
but unless and and then the other thing you have to look at is if you don't have leverage um something that someone else wants then you have no power right um and you have to look at well what is it that men really want True. and <laughs> and decide do i want to feed the ego right or do i want to wait and look for a real man who has awakened yeah. and and wants to be with the woman because he he sees her as an equal partner right and and he wants to journey with yeah. the partner um truly and, truly journey with yeah. the partner and and there's respect <laughs> yeah. and, and there's mutual respect versus uh, ownership and contempt